1998 UIU graduate from the Milwaukee Center. She's a retired chief, chief master sergeant in the Air Force uh, and Milwaukee police, police sergeant, uh, Laverne McCoy. Everybody, I don't need this microphone, do I? No, no, no. thank you. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, I want to thank you for coming out to hear me talk. After 30 minutes, you're going to be turn it off, turn it off, please. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just going to do some things, tell you a little bit of backstory of me. First of all, my name is Laverne McCoy. And um, I was born and raised in Carthage, Mississippi, one of 16 kids. Now we were in Mississippi, you had to fight for your food, you had to go in the press, you had to do, I'm a survivor, okay? And the fact that if you get up, if you gotta go to the bathroom at the dinner table, if you leave, they eat your food, so that's why I'm short, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to talk about, they told me, well, Laverne, let's talk about some leadership stuff and um, how you got, what does it take to be a good leader? I have an idea. Number one, when I joined the Milwaukee Police Department in 1983. I don't know to do this stuff. And um, I said, um, I needed a job. First of all, I'm going to go further back from that. I left Mississippi, came to Milwaukee to find a better way to live, to get educated and all that stuff. I went to UWM for a year. Bullet girls? No, I shouldn't say this. In 1980, I was under the impression that you go to college to get a smart guy, right? That's the impression I was under. I'm not saying it's true. Because wait till you hear what happened to me. But anyway, so uh, I did. I met Mr. Wright, and I dropped out of college. Number one, twofold. UWM, Milwaukee, very good college. However, it didn't, it, it, it did not gel with me. It was too big, I was just lost in the crowd, and I was glad when the husband said, stay home, we're having kids, you stay home. I gladly gave it up. So, fast forward to 1983, I found myself in the United States Air Force Reserve. Me and that wonderful husband, we uh, was parting ways. And so I realized that, you know what? I'm going to have to live to my full potential and not live and build my hopes and dreams on someone else. That's when I realized that the only person that I could get control of, I had control of, was me. What I plan to do from here on in was going to set me up in life. I went into the military. Just to get a foundation. I spent 12 years outside of the workplace. When I divorced, I did not have any work experience other than volunteer work babysitting, PTA, Girl Scout leader. And one dynamic lady told me, hey, put that on your resume. That is good enough for you because it's volunteer work. You didn't get paid. So I did that. Got into the military, and that's where it all started. Went down the basic training, Air Force Reserve. And how I got there was by accident. I was in a bar. It's not what you're thinking. Yes, it is. But don't think it. I was in a bar and I was dancing with this long, tall, good-looking guy, and he asked what I did, and I said, "I'm a Girl Scout leader." 
And he said, oh, I'm a pilot at the 128. Milwaukee. Come on down, bring your troops down. And I was then, and then he, when I took the troops over, he said, why don't you go into the military? Now mind you, I'm just now setting up my plan. And it all uh, uh, tied, it tied into leadership, I promise you, just bear with me. And so, Girl Scout leader, that's a clue, right? And um, while we were at the, at the base, he said, why don't you join the reserves? And by God, I joined the reserves and uh, started into the, um, what we know now is my long 28 year adventure to ending up being Airman Basic to Chief Master Sergeant in the United States Air Force Reserve. Leadership. When I went there, I had an advantage over the 20 year olds and the 18 year olds. You know why? Because I was a mother, PTA president. You <laughs> don't stop doing But what I was so passionate about, I thought into serving this great country. And I saw people there that impressed me. And I said, I want to be like them. I want to do some of the things that they're doing, but I want to own it myself and do it my way. I took that commitment and I said, went back home, graduated, flying colors, no problem. Came back home, needed a job. The Milwaukee Police Department was advertising for some female officers. Took the test. I was almost 32 years old. By that time, they had age discrimination. They had thrown out the height discrimination. That's why I made it under the wire. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had one opportunity to take the written test, take the psychological, the physical, and the, there was another one that I had to take. And I had to do all that before I became 32 years old. So, I realized, and I didn't have a job, I needed a job. Went in there, what I did was, mind you, if I had done this at 18, Went through school, got a job, went to college, finished. I would have been ahead of the game. But never mind that. I didn't do that. You guys are on your way right now. You are so far ahead of the game than I was when I got into it. I was 32. I doubt anybody in here is 32. Oh. <laughs> so. Went through everything flying colors. Became a police officer. I had a plan. Well, I'm going to become, I want to run this department. I want to be a sergeant or whatever. I'm just, I love being a patrol. Oh, it's the best job in the world, dragging guys to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Every man that ever broke my heart, I would see him in that perpetrator. You go in the jail. <laughs> what did I do? I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, but <coughs> I had five years in, eight years in, and I was stagnant. I did not. Someone told me, you got to go to college. you got to get a degree. But I said, well, I'm smarter than anyone in the room. Why do I have to have a degree? And I wanted to do it my way without getting a degree. Well, guess what? 20 years later, I'm still at that same spot. No degree. Well, not 20 years. I would say 12, 13. 
then I realized that, well, you know, the military is paying me, the police department is paying me, let me go back to school. And I checked out Mount Mary, UWM again, uh, Phoenix, and somehow I stumbled across a Iowa University. And I went, set up an interview. It was the extension out of West Dallas. And I think that classroom wasn't even as big as this one of them. And they gave me such a thorough inbreed. Told me what I had to have. It made it seem like she was talking to a family member. So I filled out the application, dragged, I, oh, and I had, by that time, I had a, a, a degree, a two year degree from MATC, but I wanted to, they still wouldn't promote me at the police department with a two year degree. I realized I needed a four year. And so, Meanwhile, I was being promoted through the military. However, once you hit master sergeant, and if you don't have a degree, a four-year degree, you're not going any higher. I did not know that. All these other people knew it. I didn't know it. I was too busy raising kids. So, someone told me, even before I put on my strike, they would call me chief. Hey, Chief. And I said, why are you calling me Chief? I'm just a, an airman first class. Well, you act like a Chief. Act like a Chief. How does a Chief act? Well, like you do. Leadership. Always developed it over the years, thanks to the military and to a Iowa University. They knew I had it, but they were not going to uh, promote me without the degree. Getting back to the uh, registration, you know what? The easiest thing about a Iowa University for me was filling out the registration application. I was already in the military at a certain level. I was on patrol at the Milwaukee Police Department at a certain level. And they gave us, they were serious. They made us really work for every grade we got. I told the, the teachers, you know, I try to go in and BS them. Hey, come on, we got jobs, we don't need jobs, we, you know, <laughs> oh no, this is no easy free pass, you got to do the work. So, we did the work, I did the work, my class, they taught me, up at our university, taught me things that I didn't know that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I was in your 20s, thank you for everything. I did. Now, I know you're looking at some of my love me stuff here. Now, with the police department, I created a story. I am in print. This is a program. You can leave it down there. I got plenty more. This is a program. It's about gun safety. People were being killed in Milwaukee, children getting a hold of their guns, shooting each other, thinking, thinking it, it was a toy. So we saw the need. I made up these fictitious people. It was a gun, actually, a gun shop. Uh, someone drew, uh, ran a truck through the window. This actually happened. Stole the guns. <laughs> The guns started turning up all over the city of Milwaukee. Now my problem is the, um, the city of Milwaukee, I was in community service at that time, and my thing was child safety. We didn't have anything to address that. <coughs> what is a leader? You go and beg, can we buy, can we do this? No, we don't have the money, the budget's not there. I know. I'll make my own 
book, my own program, and I did. What it is, we teach this to the class of 30 or less kids. They take the gun safety pledge. They sign a certificate. I sign it for them. They get become a junior police officer. And by God, they don't touch guns anymore. That second year, we had had, in the last five years, we had had about 80-some kids killed. I did have to do the research and from guns accidental shootings. That year we got this going, not one. Now, was it easy? No. First of all, I found, figured out how what my character's gonna be, called them up, called Ronald McDonald's house. You see Ronald McDonald's hands all over this. And talked to the people, they turned me down, and oh no. Thing I so I went back. I tweaked it a little bit and went back. And she said, "Sure, we'll give you thirty thousand dollars to create this program." This is the program that ran five years in the Milwaukee Police Department, and I did an after action. Not one child was killed. But what is leadership? see a need, you identify the problem, and you set your goals, and do not accept no. Find a way to make it happen. These are true good leaders. All the characteristics that you have, you're sitting here. You are 12 years, you know, at 18, 20, I started out. At 32, I could kick myself. You got a running start, a head start, and I expect good things from all of you. So get that done, but let me tie it in to what's the price of sugar and fed, okay, this is it. <laughs> they even though I'm on television, I'm running around, I am the darling of the Milwaukee Police Department, Mm-hmm, I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> they still did not promote me. Can anybody tell me why? Anybody. I know you some geniuses here. I talked to a few of today. Why? Why would they promote me? Take a stab at it. We're friendly. No, that ain't it. They didn't even look at me as a woman. I was so terrible looking. <laughs> I come to look at really hurt. You know, I'd come, what? Oh, honey, I would go there looking. Guys would look at me, she look like she's a man hater. But anyway, you know I just told you. I disagree. Who said that first? Oh, you get one of these. I didn't have a degree. So, let's fast forward it a bit. I got a degree. I'm a master sergeant. All of a sudden, things just pop. I got the four-year degree, remember that, right? That two-year degree didn't do nothing for me. Just put, put me on the rig out. They got, I got it. Senior Master Sergeant, you're really doing good then in the United States Air Force. Now mind you, I'm doing this along with being a police officer. Then, that was in the military. Then I made sergeant. <laughs> Immediately after I got a degree. Immediately. Where have I been? Why did I do this at 18, 22 years old? Can you imagine? I would be running some police department if I had done that then. I'm still kicking myself because I, but you guys are fortunate because you are on track. What makes a good leader? Set your own goals. You must have integrity. Stand in your own truth. Someone asked me, Laverne, tonight, 
Oh, they bought me dinner, by the way. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> have it ever bothered, did you ever have repercussions when you would speak the truth? Yes. But you know, at the end of the day, it was my truth. It was the right thing to do. It was the right time to be a stand-up person. That is the mark of true leadership. Doing and saying the right thing when it's not popular. I love doing that. And people told me, oh, I did a congressional on the United States military over money. Don't mess with me and my money, okay? <laughs> and so people say, oh, if you, if you call the, the congressman, you know, like you're not being heard, you write your congressman and tell them they're screwing over me. So, and true, they weren't being fair with the money. And someone said, you will never get another promotion on this face. I said, I don't care. It's the principle of the thing. But don't go chasing. If I have sat down and thought about, well, should I do this? Or if I do that, will I ever be promoted? I wouldn't have never been promoted or accomplished anything. I was respected because I did the right thing and I did not fear anybody. Well, yes, I did, I did. But on the outside, I did. But on the inside, you know, this can be bad, right? So what I did was I just said, I'm going to stand in the truth and do the right thing for all the right reasons. And when you're doing what you should be doing, and for the reasons that you should be doing them, you're going to succeed. That's a good mark of leadership. Integrity, commitment, loyalty. But don't be loyal to someone who does not deserve your loyalty. You've got a friend. They're doing some things that they shouldn't do. Be the person to say, hey, I care about you too much to allow you to keep going on this course of action. I'm not going to allow you to do it. I told a bunch of squad guys, I came on in 1983 in the Milwaukee Police Department. I let the people know. And if you know anything about Milwaukee, they've been sued by everybody. <laughs> Beating up people in handcuffs the whole nine yards. I let them know I had two days on patrol. And I sat back and said, let me tell you something. I don't believe in handcuffing people and beating them up. I don't believe in calling them the N-word. And if I see somebody doing it, I'm going to write a matter of and I'm going to tell the truth. That is unheard of. I wasn't even off probation. And my partner told me right away, Shh. I think we can trust them. But I told them, and they had enough nerve to tell me, well, you're not, you're not with us, and, and you got to stand with blue. And I told them, I said, if I stood with people, law enforcement, sworn to tell the truth, to do the good, protect citizens, and if you think it's okay to put someone in handcuffs and beat them up, I said, you're a coward. And I don't want you coming back and me up anyway. Now I'm four feet two. <laughs> or five feet two. <laughs> I don't want you back and me anyway, simply because who am I going to be loyal to? Not these people. And I like some of them. They, guess what? I've never had to write up one person because they never did anything wrong around me. Because they knew what I stood for. And they knew I did not play. Well, I have thinking I wouldn't play, I would write them up. And, when I, and I would, I would, I told them, I would write you up if you do that. And I'm gonna tell you, one time I stopped, one of the baddest gang members came out of BOS boys out of uh, Chicago, and these guys would kill people. They killed five people, three or four people, buried them in the backyard. I stopped one of them, because they told me, oh, we're not going to back you, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. And I called, and one of them, I stopped him for a traffic violation, 
And the guy said, I wasn't doing it. You know, they try to bluff and, and, and intimidate you and stuff. And I said, go oh, sit your behind down. And I got on the phone and I called on the, the mic and I called. I said, send me a squad over here, a traffic stop. And the subject is getting irate. Every guy in the police in my station, I mean, they were running over each other to get to me. After telling me they weren't going to back me up. But they did. You know why? Respect. And I don't call for backup like And when they got there, the guy was sitting on the steps of the church. And they go, I thought he was all right. What, what, what's happening? Because I had told him, I said, I got some knuckle dragon friends going to come here. And they're going to beat you to a pulp. I told them, you tell people what you what's going to happen to them so they can understand. <laughs> he was out there acting crazy, failing his arm. Yeah. I said, okay, wait till they get here. One of the cops get out of the car with shades on his at night, stroking his <laughs> nightclub, and then one got his gun. <laughs> and I'm looking at them. You better go sit your behind down. <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> but I said that to say this. You win respect in the end. And these jokers, what they did for me is that you let people know where you're coming from. Don't sit on the fence. Oh, I gotta figure out is this gonna hurt me or is this gonna help me? Don't ever do anything that's gonna help you. Do things that is gonna help the masses. Because when you do that, it's all gonna come back to you. <laughs> anyway. Now, um, we have something, they told me to do uh, um, a few, a few, uh, um, if I can talk and ask some questions, and you better ask questions. You better ask good questions, okay? Because I got Water bottles I gotta give up. <laughs> <laughs> but Upper Iowa University, I look at this, I see Upper Iowa University. And guess what? You know what I would say when I didn't want to go to college, you know, go at night? I I got stole the thing from Rick James, you and I, Upper Iowa, get it? <laughs> you and I. <laughs> Up all over the universe, I was like, oh, you and I don't want to go. I don't want to go today. And I, I went anyway. But every time I look at this, I think about thank you, Up all over the Not thank you because they allowed me to go to college. Thank, I thank them simply because they allowed me the, the benefit of a great education. Those, I don't know where they got these people from, but they were really great. They treated us like adults but they made us do the work and they helped us. If you had a problem, you couldn't see your way through it, they would help you. It's not one time I didn't call someone or, or go in to meet a person that they didn't stop what they were doing to help me. Now that's at the extension. I don't know what's going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I look at this, my chief, I, I love that. Because I, I figure I owe the fact that Upper Iowa made it so easy, made it possible schedule-wise. They made it easy schedule-wise. There was a course that I couldn't take, and I called them up. I said, wait a minute, I can't come in the daytime. I got jobs. Then and the lady said, well, we offer that class on a Saturday. Do you know they made us go to school eight hours every Saturday for at least eight or nine weeks. Eight hours, that's brutal, man. <laughs> We're adults, we got jobs. And we kept telling them, no, 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 you're gonna do the, do the work. But when you're doing that work, it becomes easier and easier, and then you really believe you got it going on. <laughs> well, I learned this in school. Let me tell you about what uh, Casey said, Professor Casey. And I was throwing stuff at my bosses and letting them know, oh, wait a minute, you administer, you don't have to do that because I read the book. <laughs> but anyway, 
I got a great, great education. The leadership thing helped me along the way simply because when you have confidence in your skills, in who you are, in what you stand for, the leadership stuff is going to come. And when you are out there doing stuff for the masses, what can I do to help mankind every day? You put on this earth to impact somebody's life in a positive manner every day. I don't care if it's just saying, how you doing? You really look nice today. That's all you have to do. And leadership is a person with that confidence, with integrity, and all these other good things that come from that comes from having a good, solid education. Now, I brought this in. I just thought this would be fun. I got way, way more pictures than this. <laughs> way, way. I've got one of these sitting in the cockpit of the C-130. I wanted to bring that, but there's no educational value to that other than me looking cool, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, a little baby, and I read, uh, this is when I retired, and they do this for you. And I said, well, and I wanted you all to, uh, to understand that, I guess I am a police officer, <coughs> as in the military. It, it, if you don't show pictures, they don't believe you. So that's a picture. And, and, and uh, that is where, what, uh, uh, that's what they gave me. And this is my badge. Oh, I became a sergeant <laughs> of Iowa University. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Iowa. And look, they gave me my badge. They said, we're not going to just give it to you. So you can walk around, so you're a maniac, you'll be on their old <laughs> senile, stopping people, trying to arrest them. So they gave me the badge and they put it in this plastic and I can watch it every day and I think, wow, you and I, we did it, we abide. So, this, after that, before I retired, all of this stuff happened after I got a degree from up high. Someone in the community, remember, I've been in the community for years. Volunteers doing this, doing that. All of a sudden, uh, the television station sponsored this Who's Who. It's 22 people, and it's the Milwaukee time. And there I am, right there. <laughs> One of the recipients of I'm just so great that you are. <laughs> and they tell my story, my Bible. Pictures to prove what I'm saying. <laughs> then I got ready to retire in 2010, and believe me, I was ready to retire. Because nothing looks worse than an old woman running around in combat boots and a, and a police gun trying to arrest somebody. You're already old. Too old. Let me get over this. So uh, um, I went and they said, okay, for your ceremony, do the picture. So I, it's not a good picture, but I did it. And, and then I'm going to have questions later. Oh, I'm going to add this to the I love me wall, too. This is really cool. I love it. This is what I'm really proud of. And the reason I'm showing you this, it would not be possible had not Upper Iowa University somehow accepted my application and gave me a fantastic uh, uh, opportunity. This, my retirement, this one is from the President of the United States, and this, was, this one is from the Chief of the Air Force and the Secretary, I don't know who all these people are. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's so cool about it? You know what's so cool about it? It says Chief Master Would not be possible that not came from 
What? Hey, you get it. I'm at Iowa University. That's why. And I love it. I right? how many people got the president saying so. And but I love it more because I'm a, I'm a chief. We can get more money in retirement. <laughs> All right. So now I have some really brutal stories to tell you about me being a police officer, shooting at people and all that, and, and skull dragging them. But um, the people that I had lunch with, dinner with today, uh, you know, I don't think I want to leave your tender hearts with that kind of image. <laughs> you don't want to know about that. And, you just go, I didn't like it. <laughs> and, and, um, but the, the whole thing about it is that I love being a police officer. I love being in the United States military. I had all the confidence. Don't get me wrong, I started off doing these things. I was at base level. But having the degree and the confidence, the integrity, and all these good things that goes along with being a, uh, an alum from Iowa just kicked it up a notch. When I got that degree, you couldn't tell me nothing. And boy, when I came to this campus and saw how beautiful it was and how nice the people, I just started strutting. Yeah, I'm here. This is up the higher. So, can anybody tell me three things that makes a good leader? I've got valuable prizes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Loyalty means what? Would you be loyal? to some scumbag that does not deserve your loyalty, or with someone who is uh, uh, undeserving, they're not doing the right thing. <laughs> Come on now. How many people will stop their friend? I hear it all the time. People are over there drinking, they're getting sloppy drunk, and no one says anything. Well, it's not any of my business. How many people have ever said something to a friend? I saw your hand. Now, I'm not saying hate on her for no reason, okay? <laughs> so, integrity. What does that word mean? And by the way, I met some really bright people today. I am, you know what? I was scared to death. I can't even uh, retire and, 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 and just, you know, sit around and do nothing because I'm worried that these young people going to screw up everything. <laughs> but I met some young people today that I think you guys are so far ahead of the game that we, this country is going to be okay. And thanks to our university. <laughs> <laughs> so, integrity. What does that mean? Don't use that word to the black person. Stand in good name. She's <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Integrity. Uh, now, integrity is, it's, to me, is the belief that you're going to do the right thing and you're going to keep an open mind to, uh, uh, to see a, uh, um, a different point of view. If someone can say, hey, the, uh, the integrity that you have, I take you in the hotel room over there, orders in. They've got some wine on the bar in the room. <laughs> the past customers left. Then you notice, are you going to drink it? <laughs> 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 I mean, she's kind of scared. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm sorry, I drank it. 
right. <laughs> it's gone. What you talking about? <laughs> You can admit to something, right? <laughs> so, uh, um, let me see. Leadership buses. What are they? And I don't want all the smart people. Well, that's all of you. <laughs> but, not the ones I've met tonight. What is your definition of leadership? And how does that fit in with where you are today and where you want to go tomorrow? And how are you going to get there? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 sir, thank you. I like that. What else? There's a lot more things to be. Yes, ma'am. What? Someone that is influential. How do you get to be influential? <laughs> Just so we influence God. Come in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put you on, I'm, I'm just like Auntie Laverne, okay? Um, influence, a great leader, you're onto something. Uh, this, this, this commander told us once, and I was sitting there like, he had a halo on his head. His job or her job is to make you do things, not to make you, inspire you to do things that you don't want to do, but you know it is the right thing to do. Influence. To do the right thing. Now there are some bad leaders. What's this guy named out in California? Charles Manson that had these crazy people killing folks. You don't want that. But you want to understand good leaders from bad leaders. So yeah, what's another definition of leaders? Yes. Having heart. Yeah, I like that. Caring, empathizing. I wouldn't ask you to do something that I I remember being in the heaven and, and, and I'm a short person with short arms, but as you can see I have so many stripes there all the way down to my all the way all the way down to my, my wrist. And 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 the guys and we were had a crunch, a backup. Now I'm a chief. And I oversee, at the time, six or seven different units, areas of operation. And we were in the dining hall. And I told the little guy that was struggling, stand back. Let me show you how to do this. Not that I wanted to show him off here. It was because I was trying to get the line through. And my commander was in line. I want to get him through. And boom. And I took them, I said, I'm not just a pretty face. Believe you, they laughed because I was looking like death warm over there. <laughs> so, ask the people to do things that you've already done before. If I ask you to wash that garbage can out, I guarantee you, I've done it 15 times before you were even born. So, that's good. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Good communication skills. Nah. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Good communication skills. But look, you can have leaders that only graduated from, from eighth grade. But they're good at communicating what it is that they want done and how they want it done. Okay? Because I have seen some glorified Lord hammers <laughs> in leadership positions. And they can communicate, but you ask them to go nail two nails in the floor, they couldn't do it if their lives were getting up. Okay. So now I'm going to spare your tender hearts from all the blood and guts that I went through. <laughs> And the military stuff that I'm so proud of at the time that I was going through this, it didn't mean, it didn't, I didn't do the job for that. I only appreciate this now that I'm retired. I'm going, whoa, I was really something. 
I didn't have time. I was too busy getting the job done. Saving the United States in the military. Traveling all over, having no problems. And I want to tell you, nobody parties like to party like a cop or a military. <laughs> Jesus. I'm surprised I lived this long. Okay. <laughs> okay, any questions you have? I do have war stories, but I don't want to bore you. <laughs> and police stories, shooting at people, all that good stuff, but you don't want to hear that. Question over here. Yes, ma'am. What do you like to do nowadays in your free time? Um, travel. I love to, I was in Russia. That was a trip that I wanted to do. I went to the Eastern Bloc and and we were going into Belarus. No, we were going into Russia. And it took us about two and a half hours just to get through a checkpoint. And you know when you put on your visa that you're police and you're military and how many knows Bruce <laughs> and when she got to mine, she looked up. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so yeah, traveling and and um, you know I try to stay away from my kids and grandkids because I'm not that kind of grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you get fun. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Turkey. I was in Japan. Well, a lot of this is your parents paying taxes. So <laughs> I went with the military on a lot of it, like Turkey and Japan and all of that. But to Africa was another place. I went on my own. I had to pay for that in Australia. But that was a dynamic place. I went there. And I'm going to tell you something. They were, the State Department said, oh, don't go there because uh, there's some unrest. You know what I did? I went and got my combat boots, put on some BDUs. You know what BDUs? Battle dress uniform. Mm -hmm. You know, the camis. You, you, you kids know this camouflage. You probably got them at Abercrombie Fitch or But we had them before they copied. And I put that stuff on and I had... And I said, that's wrong. <laughs> I went to Africa. Those people there, they fell back. I went on safari in there. <laughs> <laughs> every, I got mucho respect. <laughs> but never mind, you know, you have to take the, the military stuff off and the name tag. I just had to do it. Scared to death of that stuff. Yes? What part of Africa did you go to? Kenya, oh, you know, so far, I, I, I'm not going to really, you know, I'm just faking it up, you know. <laughs> I just touched up over here. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> went to Kenya, we was on a safari. Oh, it, it was so tame, I took my granddaughter. So, um, uh, we, we went five days running around Mikado tours. And we got there, and we were at this whole this hotel, and, and this big tall guy. I don't know is he Swahili, whatever. Oh, he looked good. Oh, he was a tall, beautiful. Had on all that stuff, you know, just tight things. I'm standing there, and I was with a tour group, and he's all regal and dignified, and everybody was scared. Oh, he's gonna put me in a pot and eat me if I say something. But anyway. I go up to him. I got my granddaughter. She's a lover. I'm a leader, remember? I go up. I tug on his spirit, you know, on his boot. Beautiful headdress. Good looking man. Sir, do you mind if I let, if, if I get a picture of you and my granddaughter? You always throw the kids up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, of course. With an English accent! <laughs> I'm going, what? <laughs> and he had his headdress, his spirit. 
man, did he look good. <laughs> anyway, so after I did that, here come the rest of the little true followers. Everybody's taking pictures with them. And that's what, I, I love that. I love that about Africa. And the hotel was just out of five stars, it was a six. That's where all the dignitaries that they go and they have stuff. So we got there and went five days seeing all these animals and stuff. And, and hey, if you ever go to Africa, you know, if they tell you to be in the compound, you know, so like Jurassic Park, this is how I have to relate to you guys. You better have your behind inside that pit. Because if you're not, they will lock you out. You will become lion bait. And, and, and then, so we, we, we travel, they got all these people waiting on us hand and foot, which I love. This is a great safari, right? And we travel all through the place, and we see lions, and, uh, giraffes, everything. And, and we go to Mombasa. That's the, uh, the port. And we get on the princess cruise. I said, hallelujah, when I saw that princess cruise. <laughs> and we got on there, and we toured all the way down until Cape Town, South Africa, which is one of the prettiest places in the world. And we flew out. I think I was 17 days. And so we did that. That was interesting. OK, what else? Yes, sir. You definitely seem like the kind of person with a no-nonsense attitude. Were you raised with that, or do you have a role model that you base that off of, or? Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, actually, my having a strong sense of self. Number one, I believed at an early age that I was going to do the right thing. I was going to be one of the good guys. I used to watch. Um, the old westerns back in, well, I'm old as dirt, so probably don't know. <laughs> but the good guys always wore the white hat, and I wanted to protect the the people when bullies were beating up on them. And you right? Hey, I'm gonna give you a thing for that. How did you pick up on this? After all, I'm such a lovable person. <laughs> but anyway, they call me the pit bull. <laughs> say what I mean, and I mean what I say. And uh, uh, but my role model was uh, my father. He was meaner than a junkyard dog, and I think I picked up a lot from him. But I wanted to be fair. I have always been fair. No one said this. But a great leader does not have favorites. Do you understand me? You do not have favorites. Matter of fact, you get that one person that will look at you and tell you, if you're doing something and it's wrong, look at you and say, hey, you got an ugly baby. What you're doing is ugly. No one wants to say that baby is ugly. You know we are ugly baby, right? You're supposed to say it. You look for that in, as a leader. I remember one time I was, oh, I was, by the way, I was the president of the organization of women. And, uh, and so, I've got two or three minutes, so I know I'm getting out of here. But, I, and I was the president of Black Organization of Women, and I was the first president of League of Martin in Milwaukee. So, I got this one girlfriend. She will tell me my baby's ugly in a drop of a hat. And what we have a bunch of. And I was celebrating because it was such a success. And I hadn't eaten anything because I very seldom eat. But I was drinking. <laughs> and I had two drinks. That's all I allowed myself. Man was not bouncing. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, now look, you're the president. You can't be drinking. I said, I only had two. She said, you shouldn't even drink a half of a drink because you haven't eaten anything and it leaves a bad impression. She told me the baby was ugly. I took her advice. 
I did not do that anymore. But that's what good part of leadership is. And getting back to your stuff, I think you think I forgot about you. But being a, 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 a role model, what I did was I would find the people, commanders, who were fair, who were great guys. When you get a commander, and, and we had one, General, um, he just became a general. Uh, his name was Hart, Colonel Hart before. They sent him over to Desert Storm because, uh, not, um, no, Desert, one of them deserts. And um, he was my, because they couldn't get the, the, the base up and running. So he goes, they had all these generals. He wasn't a general. They sent him over, they couldn't do it. They didn't have the formula. They didn't listen because they were generals. We know everything. Carl Hart goes over and he gets his little think tank around him and he did a walkabout. And that's what I did. When I say walkabouts, you go and visit every one of your units. And he went to the A1C, a tech sergeant in every unit. What do you need me to do for you so you can do your job better. He talked to them. They told him he was writing it down. Well, he wasn't. He had his major writing it down. That's a good leader. And that was one of my role models. Because he, he and I asked him, I said, why did you do it? And he said, because I don't know how to fix an airplane. I went to the guy who does the work every day so he can tell me. I don't want him to tell his boss. His boss tell my boss, my second in command, and then he tells me it's watered down. He said, I want to hear it from the, the guy of the gal. And when they heard it, they got what they needed because these people will get this information and they go sit on it because I don't want to mess my image up by telling the general I need more materials. I need this. So I would get people like that who were not afraid to say, I need to ask the people who actually do the work. And that's what they did. And he was a great leader. And guess what? He made general. He was a navigator. You don't see navigators making generals very often. But he was just that good. And he called me up. He, by the way, made me a chief. Call me up. Because when you have leaders, great leaders, you always have haters. Because they make people do their job. And people say, oh, he's just, he's picking on women. He's making us do our job. And you know, the, you play the, the, the woman card. I hate that. Anyway, sometimes you want to point. But, so they had held this star up. He called me, I was at some party, and he was, you know, dejected. I didn't know what was going on. He called me. It, I mean, he's, I'm over at the room. Hey, I'm McCarty. When anybody calls you your name like that, you better be very afraid. <laughs> what? What happened? I do not think. Walk slow and think fast. That's what they tell us. <laughs> so... <laughs> He said, you know my star is being held up. What? Who's holding your star up? Yeah, I was ready to go fight somebody. So, and he said, blah, blah, blah. He said, remember, blah, blah, blah. He said, what, what do you need me to do, sir? He said, I need you to write a letter. The Lieutenant General Mitchell, this was the guy doing that investigation on these allegations. When somebody accused you of something, you're dead in the water. People told him, don't fight. Don't, don't, don't roll over and take this. Fight it. So he saw me. He said, girl, you got all the spots covered. You're black. You're short. You're female. <laughs> you're a cop. Damn, you're a chief. Mm -hmm. I had five slots filled right away. <laughs> and he said, write this guy and tell him some background on what's going on. Two-star general. There were other chiefs on that base. Do you think they stood up and did the right thing? No. Because they were afraid they might 
get transferred or something bad might happen to him. I wrote that gentleman. He's a gentleman. <laughs> sir. I did say sir. <laughs> <laughs> and I let him know. And then I got a picture of the guy. Good looking guy. Young. I got a daughter need a husband. <laughs> 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 she introduced him to my daughter in Norfolk. She ain't got no husband. Then I started thinking about it. This man ain't did nothing to me. Why would I do this to him? <laughs> I'm not gonna introduce him to my daughter. But anyway, Colonel Hart called me back and I wrote one of the you know, it was from passion from the heart, and I just laid it on the line, and I let them know, you know, I'm the first, you know, police officer, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, he probably looped up my bio and saw what I was going on, so I didn't have to say that. Yes, I did. I, I said it just in case. I'm the first person to please emerge, the president of Lee Mark. I always fight for discrimination and blah, blah, blah. But and then I told him, Colonel Hart, and I just ran with the accolades was Colonel Hart. And I told him, believe you me, if he was a bad person, I would tell him. I said, but he is, he's a keeper. He's one of the good guys. Guess what? Got his star. Colonel Hart called me up, invited me to depend on him. Leadership, loyalty, integrity. People of a chief knew that. But could he depend on them? Do you think they would stick their neck out for that? No. And they did. It was just the right thing to do. So as you always. I'll leave you with that. Any more questions? Hey, I got all these things to go in, and this guy is telling me to get off the phone the thing. <laughs> but I got all of these to do. <laughs> Who asked me a question and I didn't give them? Yeah, I picked on you a little bit. <laughs> hey, you got one. I gave you picked on me. I gave you one. I actually, I ah, you don't get two. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I know it's late. You guys want to get out of here. But it's been a pleasure. And um, it's, um, I, I, I'm really feeling a lot better about the future of our country now that I've seen and talked, had the privilege to talk to some of you guys. I know us old folks gonna be taking uh, you're gonna take real good care of us, right? Forget that. <laughs> <laughs>